Hello, everybody. Welcome to the deep dive on high dynamic range, wide color gamut, and linear rendering in the WebGL and WebGP APIs. This is a joint presentation between Jeff Gilbert of Mozilla, and my name is Ken Russell. I work at Google. For a little bit of background, the WebGL and forthcoming WebGP APIs both provide GPU accelerated, immediate mode graphics rendering to the web. Now, native game engines and image processing applications have pushed the forefront of rendering fidelity, and the web must keep up in order to stay competitive. Most game engines today operate in a linear gamma space to support physically-based rendering, or PBR. Real-time PBR is one of the major innovations in 3D graphics in recent years. The Unity engine is an important customer publishing games to the web and Unity documents their linear versus nonlinear gamma workflows. All of Unity's tiny examples use the linear workflow. These examples run in WebAssembly and JavaScript and do their rendering with WebGL. For example, you can take a look at the Tiny Racing minigame to get a feel for their rendering quality. Both WebGL and WebGPU support the so-called sRGB encoded texture formats needed for an 8-bit per channel linear rendering workflow. However, currently, WebGL always uses an 8-bit normalized backbuffer format, and this is unsuitable for linear rendering. Therefore, working in the sRGB encoded formats needed for linear rendering currently imposes a full canvas blitz at the end of each frame. And this is prohibitively expensive on many GPUs, both desktop and mobile. Now, Jeff's going to show you what the code looks like for this. Thanks, Ken. So here's what the code looks like today. Um, you can see it's really obvious where the extraneous full, full screen copies are coming from. We have two calls to blit frame buffer. They're, blit, they're calls that are copying the entire width and height of the frame, first to resolve from multi-sample to single sample, the resolved frame buffer, and then again copying from the resolved frame buffer to the drawing buffer for WebGL. What we're hoping to do instead is on the next slide, where we're able to give you a back buffer, which is already compatible with your multi-sample frame buffer. What this means is that one of your whole blit frame buffers is gone. You only have a resolve directly from your multi-sample frame buffer down to your WebGL draw buffer in the format that you wanted. What is what code is actually making that possible? Well, in WebGL, that would be the new drawing buffer storage function that we're looking to add. This will be very similar to the render buffer storage command you may be useful if used to if you're used to WebGL. Um, you specify the format you want, sRGB8, alpha8 in this case, and that's what we set your back buffer to. And that's what lets you skip that full screen bit blit that we talked about earlier. We consider some alternatives here but we decided not to move forward with them. Um, at the time, one of the alternatives was uh, for context creation, specifying that context creation becomes a little bit confusing in WebGL 1 when you don't necessarily know which extensions you have enabled, like when the context is first created. So we're going with the drawing buffer storage for now. For WebGPU, it's similar. It already has support for this. Uh, WebGPU is a little bit different from WebGL because you have this separate concept of a swap chain. So in WebGPU, it's done by, by configuring the swap chain with this format. So this is expected to work just straight out of the box in WebGPU. Wide color gamut support is another big one. Um, that's being able to specify uh, usually a bigger color space than default for your WebGPU or Web WebGL content. Um, what we're looking for here is we're probably just going to add it to WebGL's rendering context directly. So you just say gl.colorspace equals display p3. That gives you the nice big modern display p3 color space instead of the much narrower traditional sRGB color space. Um, we expect for WebGPU, it's going to be really similar. But again, it's going to be on the swap chain instead. That's the only real difference. The functionality is going to be pretty much the same. Like it's going to give you you're going to write out colors, and the colors are going to be interpreted in the color space that you give us. For high dynamic range support, again, it's going to be pretty similar between WebGL and WebGPU. We really want to get apps to be able to take advantage of these new HDR displays that are becoming more and more common. Um, one of the caveats here is that HDR does take a lot more power 
usually because you have frame buffers that are like at least twice as big in terms of just like larger pixel formats. So we can't like turn it on by default. We need to have it be opt-in by the application. We need clear signals from the application about how it wants us to render them. Chris Cameron has made a great proposal for how to, how to deal with this in WebGL and WebGPU and Canvas in general. And um, that's what the direction we're currently going right now. Um, on the next slide, you can see what that looks like. Um, again, you can see the drawing buffer storage command that we talked about. You can see the gl.colorspace command that we talked about or attribute that we talked about. And you can see now at canvas.configurehdr where we're opting into an extended range. And then right after that, we're calling clear buffer FV with a super red 2001 color which normally we would just truncate down and you get 1001, just like normal full red. When you have HDR enabled, that lets you go all the way up to whatever the maximum display for the display is. So you can display these like super reds. And again, here we see that with WebGPU, it's gonna be really similar. Um, since it's on the canvas, you just, again, you set it on the canvas, you draw these otherwise super luminant colors to it and it just works. And I can pass it back over to Ken to talk about where this work is happening. Thanks, Jeff. So these new proposals for linear gamma rendering, extended color spaces, and high dynamic range enable a new, new level of rendering fidelity in WebGL and WebGPU. They're under active development and collaboration here, so please join the discussions and contribute. The work's ongoing in the Color Web Community Group, the WebGL Working Group, and the WebGPU Community Group. We'd like to extend a special thanks to Chris Cameron from Google for driving many of these discussions and proposals. So thanks to you all, and we're looking forward to working with you in the ColorWeb uh, Community Group Workshop.